everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. Kimber Bell has come out with the coolest thing. Those of you who got the Bella box that recently came out, there was a little blue piece of plastic in there and it was called a clear blue tile. And you were supposed to use that clear blue tile to create alignment lines on a project that you could embroider in the Bella box. Well, Kimberbell has released a full set of clear blue tiles. This is another option for you to be able to align background quilting designs on your projects. And I would use them on smaller projects. I don't know that I personally would do a great big full size quilt with it, but there are a lot of little projects that you can do where you want to put background quilting on, but you're just not real sure how to go about doing that. So I am in the middle right now of making a pillow with Lori Holt's flea market line, and I used clear blue tiles to background quilt this back piece of the pillow. And on the front, it's kind of hard to see because it, the pattern is so busy, but on the back, here you can see the background quilting and how seamless this is and how it all worked out. I just really, really enjoyed doing this. No thought to this at all and no math, which is really cool. So you guys, you simply cannot mess this up. So what is in the clear blue tiles box? When we open it up, we're gonna see a user guide and it's a full user guide that tells you exactly how to use your clear blue tiles and you will get pictures of all of the tiles that are available. You'll get everything from a one by seven up to a six by 10 for all of the border designs that come with this kit. And then in the blocks, you get everything from a two by two, which is called a bitty block, all the way up to a uh, eight by 10, which is the largest embroidery area that you can do with these. As you go through the book, it'll tell you exactly how to mark and measure using your clear blue tiles. So you can go through the book and it'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on what you need to do in order to be able to make this system work for you. In the other part of the kit, when you open it up, you get the little four by four, that clear blue tile, that sits right there. You get a USB with tons of design. You get a couple of water soluble pens you get a couple of slap bands, and I'll tell you what those are for in just a minute. And then when we open up the plastic back here, there are two packages of your clear blue tiles. These are the standard set, then there is an expansion set for those of you that have the ginormous hoops. So how do these things work? When you get down to it, all they are is a visual alignment guide for you to be able to see exactly where you're gonna quilt the designs that come on the USB stick in the kit. On this USB stick, there are two different kinds of blocks. There are clear blue tile blocks, which are all of the sizes that are in these two packages, and those are the ones that will do full background quilting within the limits of the size of the tile. Then there are another set of designs that you would use for other Kimber Braille projects that have, say, where you're gonna uh, put down your batting first and it'll tack it down, then trim away the batting, then it'll give you a fabric placement line, tack down the fabric, and then give you the design inside of that. And then you trim those and you can quilt as you go with those blocks. So what I'm gonna focus on today is doing a project with these clear blue tiles just for the background quilting designs. These designs nest together so that when it's all said and done, you really can't tell where one starts and the other one stops. And it's just such a neat, neat system. And 
one of the very cool things that they have done with this is that regardless of the design size tile that you choose, the scale of the designs are all the same. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to do the top of my pillow. When you do this project using this system, you want to cut out your top to the exact size that you want it to be. In this case, this is a 17 inch square. You want to cut out your batting to be one inch larger than your top. And then you want to cut out your backing to be about three inches larger all the way around. For those of you who have been embroidering a long time, you might have misplaced your grids that go in your hoops. We'll talk about that in a minute. But you will definitely need your grid that goes in your hoop in order to be able to make this project. Let me show you how it's done. Here's eight by 10 finished block. Here's my eight by eight finished block. So when I put this down, I can tell because I'm going to have a half inch seam allowance on either side of my project. So the clear blue tile is very cool. Can you see it has a little arrow at the top? It's got a dot in the middle. It has a size marker there and then it has alignment lines that are poked out of each one of these tiles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to align this exactly where I want it to be. Like I said, this is 17 by 17. So if I do eight here, eight here, eight here, and eight here, I know I'm going to be able to background quilt my entire project in four passes. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up. Now I'm going to use a friction marker. The kit wants you to use a water soluble marker. I'm not a real fan of those. And so I'm just going to use my friction marker on the back. It completely ironed away with no problem. This is not a friction pen. This is a friction marker. They're different. I don't recommend using a pen. So I'm just going to align this so that the edge of my tile is right on the, the design that's printed on here. And all I'm going to do is mark my center dot. I'm going to draw my alignment lines with my arrow. Draw that, draw that. And before you remove it, there are little marks here on the corners and the sides. You want to make yourself marks. These are designed so that when you match up the marks to the next tile, it's going to stitch perfectly and everything will fit together. Okay, now because this is an eight by eight, right here in the window that you have, they want you to go ahead and go eight by eight. That's where you'll put the size. See how that was done just like that? I'm going to move it right over here and I'm going to align it with these marks. These are your alignment marks. This one especially right here. And you want to make sure you get these so that they align just right. And look, it's going to cover exactly like I want and everything is straight because I have a line here, line here, and a line here. So I know it's straight. Okay, and do this, center dot, alignment lines, okay, eight by eight. And the reason you need a little window to tell you what it is that you're doing is because let's say that this was a little bit longer project down here. Well, then I could use my eight by 10. See how it lines up exactly right on these lines? But I need to know that this is an 8 by 10 and write that in there so that I choose the right design when I rehoop and complete it with the embroidery machine. This is an easy one, guys, with this pillow because it's an 8 by 8 all the way around. So I am lining up. I am lining up this line and this line and these corners right here making sure it's all straight and you want to do the arrow so you know which way is up you 
these should match up just like that. And this is eight by eight. And then the next one and the final one. So I'm gonna be able to background quilt this pillow top in four passes. So now I can take this off. Let me just put eight by eight just for consistency's sake. So now I can take this off and I know, based on where my marks are, exactly where it's going to quilt and my quilt is completely marked. Now what you need to do is you need to hoop all three layers at one time. I'm going to turn this around so my arrows are up to me. And this being an 8x8, I need to use uh, my 9x14. I'm going to use my 10x10 hoop on this one just so it's nice and square in there and I know everything's going to fit just fine. Now, I do not have a grid for my 10 by 10 hoop. It's actually 10 and 5 eighths by 10 and 5 eighths. I don't have a grid for this. So I ordered from Amazon, and I'll put a link below this video. I ordered these non-slip vinyl template sheets, and these work great. Although they are eight and a half by 11, I went ahead and put two of them together, and I just trimmed them out. So I made a grid for my 9x14 hoop and put a little hole in it and my 10x10 uh, 10 10 right here, my 272 by 272 millimeter and put that hole right there and marked top. And when I did the drawing on here and wrote everything on it, I did that with a Crayola washable marker. So if you make a mistake, it comes right off. Now, if you're like me and you don't have enough backing fabric in order to extend uh, to fit your hoop, then you can go ahead and just baste in some no-show poly mesh, which is what I've done. I basted it to the batting that is in the project. And now I need to hoop it. Okay, so now I have my hoop placed with a grid. I'm gonna get it exactly so this center hole, which is, let me highlight this so you guys can see it. The center hole I have marked on my grid is right there. Okay. And I'm going to put that center hole over the dot in the middle of the grid for this particular 10 by 10 hoop. And then I have, I can see the grid lines that I drew with the clear blue tile through the grid. And now what I'm gonna do is make sure that the bottom of the hoop is open and very loose. And I'm just gonna fold over this extra and kind of roll this up on the sides. It's kind of fiddly, but that's okay. The best things in life are not easy. All right, so I have it, I'm holding it very taut on the underside, you want that tight. Pull that in real tight. Hold on to it. Bring this back over so you guys can see. And now I'm just going to drop the top hoop with everything taut into the bottom hoop. There. And that's perfect. That's right where I need it to be. Great. Okay. And now I'm just going to tighten that up and I am ready to go stitch out my first pass. Once you have your project hooped, that's when you're gonna to wanna to get some embroidery tape and tape down the edges of your project to like within half of your seam allowance. So the seam allowance on this particular project is a half an inch, so I can put my tape like a quarter of an inch in and that's going to prevent the embroidery foot from getting caught up underneath. Okay, there we go. Now we're ready to go stitch. 
Okay, I'm gonna put the USB into my Luminaire. Now, if your machine cannot drill down into folders within folders, you will need to do this on the computer and pull the design that you want off and put it on another USB and bring it over to your machine. But I'm gonna to touch embroidery and the pocket for memory. And I'm gonna to go to USB. On this USB, what you get you get a folder full of your embroidery file quilting. You get your instructions for block by block quilting. You get a table runner design and then there's some other computer information there. So I want embroidery files quilting. And I'm gonna go to PES for my machine. Now here's where you get the rest of the designs. And so there's bitty blocks, those are the two by twos. Here's your border loops, border swirls, centering crosshairs. Here's some fall designs, winter, swirls, summer, spring, loops. So I'm gonna choose spring. And inside of spring, you get two different folders. Everyone will have this. So the block by block, that is the quilt as you go that I explained to you at the first of the video. And then your clear blue tiles is your all over background quilting. So I'm gonna to touch that. And then what I'm gonna do is scroll down and look for the eight by eight, which I think is this one right here. And I'm gonna hit set. I can tell up here, 7.85 by 7.87. That is the eight by eight. Okay, if I was using my snowman system, which I would be, but I'm taking pity on you guys that don't have this. Now, if you have a larger quilt, one of the things you can do is to roll this all up, if you like, just so it stays out of the way, and use your slap band to kind of keep a hold of it, and that will keep it from getting in your way. It says the carriage will move. And I need to make sure that the start is exactly over that dot. And that is, I'm gonna drop my needle, that is pretty close to absolutely perfect. Okay, well that's how simple that was. So now I'm just gonna hit the green button and go. This is gonna take five minutes to stitch out. Okay, it's all finished, and now I want to take it out of this hooping, re-hoop it, and do the next pass. You're just gonna go through this same process again. You remove the bottom hoop. Okay. Okay, I'm going to place this approximately where I think it needs to go, top, bottom, left and right, and get that approximate. I'm going to enlarge my hoop quite a bit, and now I'm going to take my grid and put it in here and I want it directly over the dot and I want to align my crosshairs exactly like I have from the clear blue tile. There we go. Oh, that's fine, I guess. Okay. See how quick this goes once you get the hang of it? Hold it tightly, press it down into the bottom hoop. That's good. There we go. Very nice. I just 
just wanted to tighten up that bottom screw and then I'm going to push it closed. All right, this is ready to go. Back into the machine. Oh, not quite. I need to tape this again. Oh, I got a little sticky bubble there. There we go. Okay, ready to do it again. Put it back in the machine. This is pretty close. I could probably bump this over one. I could probably bump the needle over one little jot. So I'm just going to hit layout and move and uh, maybe one more. There we go. I'm just going to hit the button and go. And see, because of the alignment lines here, the design is not overlapping onto the old design. It comes very close without actually touching it. Okay, it's all finished. Boy, that looks great. All right. Now to show you how you can mix and match these designs, I'm actually going to kind of switch midstream here. On these two I used 8x8 and an 8x8. And I'm going to go over to the ironing board and erase these marks right here. So let's say I had a different size block. Maybe this was a quilted block and this block finishes at 8x10. So I just want to show you that how easy it is to do these. So we know I have eight inches here. I could certainly do this one like this and then use, this is the eight by 10 clear blue tile. And then I could use the six by eight clear blue tile right here. If I had a six by eight block, or maybe I had even smaller blocks and you want to get real little, maybe I've got a 6x6 six six right here and then I've got a 2x6 right here. Regardless of the tile that I use, everything fits and when you stitch it out, everything is the exact same scale. So this design in this little 2x6 piece clear blue tile is not going to be any smaller other than in total overall size, but the scale of the design is going to be the same. So if you have a quilt top that's not one great big piece, but maybe it's a bunch of different little blocks that are already done, like on a baby quilt, then you can go ahead and stitch these out like this. So why don't we do that? Let's give that a shot and see how it looks. We know that eight by eight looks good together. Here, look at the back. Can you see the back? Can you see how it's all quilted? And it looks like that. It looks amazing. Everything stitched. You cannot tell where it starts and where it stops. It's just gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? Well, don't iron your project if you've got a, an iron off marker. Okay, and then I'm going to use my six by eight finished block. I'll do it this way. And I'm just gonna line up again these marks that I made and get it straight. Yeah. There we go. Now that 8x10 finished block, I should be able to do it in this 10x10 10 10 hoop, I hope. I hope, I hope. We'll see. I might have to get out my 10x16. I don't want to do that. <laughs> see, these are just a great visual alignment system so you know that everything is going to fit exactly right. All right, let me turn this this way. I'm going to need another piece of poly mesh in here. So what I'm going to do, y'all, this is the 
nuts and bolts of what goes on in my sewing room. Everybody always asks me, how do you know how to do so much? Y'all, I just try things and see how it goes. <laughs> okay. Very good. All right. That looks like that'll work. Okay. So I'm going to put my hoop here. I'm going to put my grid that I made on here. Tape that down. and put that right over the dot and align the grid lines. There we go. I'm gonna roll this up, get it real, oh, I need to loosen my hoop. That make your life easy, loosen your hoop real good. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tape this before I hoop it. I can get a nice taut feel for it there on the back and pull this over. So remember the first two we did was an 8 by 8. Now this one's an 8 by 10. I hope it'll work. It should. I don't know. It should. Where's the line? It should. Okay. I'm going to take this off. There we go. All right. That's so now I have everything taped on here real good. Let's go stitch the 8x10 design. Okay, I'm gonna get out of this. I'm gonna go back to home. Tell it okay. Embroidery. Memory. My USB. And my quilting files. PES. My spring. And clear blue tiles. And I want to scroll down to that 8 by 10. That's it right there. I can tell by these numbers up here that tell me which one it is. All right, I got it. That's good. I'm going to hit set. I'm going to hit embroidery. Oh, I need to put the arm down. Okay. Now I'm going to touch embroidery. And I need to make sure that my needle is directly over that dot and I think I need to bump it just a little bit. I'm going to go to my move. Actually, I'm going to cheat here just for the sake of expediency and I'm going to use on the luminaire you can touch this W right here for the W foot and it is going to drop a crosshair see the glowing crosshair so now I can bump this up just a little bit this is the beauty of these fancy machines you guys that's oh what did I just touch okay that looks like it's right on it and I'm just gonna touch go so now it's stitching out the 8x10 design which is the exact same scale as the 8x8 and you're not going to be able to tell the difference. Oh, this is turning out just awesome. Alright, so I've got it all lined up exactly like I want it to be aligned. And I've got it taped, my edges taped down. I'm going to roll in real tight here. Grab a hold of this and hold on. Get it taut. Don't let it shift. See how quick I did that? Make sure this goes in. 
Very nice. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I got to cut a little piece. I thought I probably shouldn't have. There we go. That works. Okay, so we're all hooped. Looks good. So now if you remember, I'm going to do this 6 by 8 finished block right here. So I have mixed and matched my different blocks. Six by eight. You need to write that right there. Okay. I'm gonna go back to home because I have to get a different size block. I go to embroidery and the pocket for memory, my USB, embroidery files, PES, spring, clear blue tiles, and now I need to find my 6x8. 6x8. It, it's using the 7.87 by 5.87. This is so nice to be able to see your alignment lines and your crosshairs. That's perfect right there. Okay. And we are ready to go. Again, it is the same scale as all of the other three designs. All right, we're all finished. Great. So I'm all finished. This is awesome. Pop this out. Oh, it turned out just perfect. I'm gonna go iron off my marks and trim this up. Oh, this turned out just beautiful. Let me get up close so you can see. Here's the front and here's the back. Isn't that pretty? I use three different sizes of tiles and you can't tell where one stops and another starts. It's great, ingenious. Now I'm gonna put a zipper on this and sew it together and make a pillow. Before I sew the pillow together, I just put in an invisible zipper. I just wanna get up close and show you what it looks like from the back. I think you can see it a lot better from the back. You can see the quilting. The front is so busy, but it's so pretty. It was so fun. Look at that. It is just gorgeous. turned out awesome. I think it's just amazing. This was easy. This was fun. I think you guys are going to like clear blue tiles. You just can't mess it up. We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye. <laughs>